Continuing from when we last left off, we learned that the juster glomerular cells of the kidneys secrete renin. So here we have renin being secreted out through the receptor and it goes into the plasma or the blood vessels. We also learned or talked about prorenin, a precursor to renin with an extra 43 amino acid chain blocking the activation site or the cleft. So we'll use prorenin as an example of how it cannot bind to angiotensinogen. So where does angiotensinogen come from? Well, it comes from the liver. So here we have got the liver, the hepatocytes, the liver cells, and it secretes angiotensinogen, a long peptide. All this is angiotensinogen. And, and it actually continues. I just finished off if you, at, at the very end, histamine, it actually continues after histamine, but I just cut it short because it's irrelevant. We only need to concentrate on the beginning of this peptide chain, um, on, on how it converts to angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2. But basically, all this is the main uh, angiotensinogen. So angiotensinogen gets secreted into the plasma and the blood vessels by the hepatocytes. Um, and as you can see, uh, we'll just write uh, blood vessels, blood plasma, and blood vessels. So as you can see, angiotensinogen cannot bind because of the blocked activation site. It can easily bind to renin, and when it once it's bound to renin, the bond, the peptide bond between leucine and valine, gets cleaved off. Leucine, valine, leucine, valine. It gets cleaved off creating a decapeptide. If you can count the molecular structure of this remainder, remainder peptide chain, it's got 10. And this is known as decapeptide. Also known as angiotensin 1. So angiotensinogen converts to angiotensin 1. So now angiotensin 1, it travels through the plasma, through the blood vessels. It travels, 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 keeps traveling until it comes to the lung. Now the lung, the capillary beds of the lung, they have the, the cells, they have these enzymes called ACE. So we'll draw ACE here. In the cell membrane and we'll draw another ACE here. So actually ACE, if you remember from the last uh, Renin overview, it stands for angiotensin converting enzyme. And so what it does is it basically converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. How it does this is that angiotensin 1 binds to its activation site and then his, and the end bond, the histamine and leucine bond, gets cleaved off. So the his and leu bond gets cle cleaved off, the decapeptide, creating the remainder octapeptide. So the histamine and leucine bond gets broken off, creating the octapeptide, the 8 bond, also known as angiotensin 2. Now it should be noted that um, ACE, the enzyme ACE, exists all over the body. It's just, um, it's just found more in capillary beds because of its high density. Um, and also, it should be noted that the enzyme ACE, it has another function in that it actually um, inhibits, it inhibits a vasodilator called bradykinin. A vasodilator is something that dilates the blood vessels, making it, uh, having, getting it it's low blood pressure, basically. So it inhibits the function of bradykinin. Bradykinin is secreted by plasma globulins and also vascular endothelium cells.
So remember, bradykinin vasodilator. So, it's actually interesting to note that there is another enzyme which can convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, not only ACE. And so a uh, good way of illustrating this is by introducing, um, introducing ACE inhibitors. So these things blocking the activation site are ACE inhibitors. And what they do is that they inhibit the function of ACE. So angiotensin 1 cannot bind to ACE, which means that it cannot convert, be converted into angiotensin 2. And this is what people... These are what people who suffer from high blood pressure take. ACE inhibitors. So if ACE inhibitors um, do this, it means that ACE cannot um, do its normal function. And so it no longer inhibits bradykinin. So bradykinin is free to go around. And bradykinin actually has another function. Not only a vasodilator, but it also... Uh, reacts with mast cells, particularly cardiac mast cells, the heart mast cells, through a G protein process. So bradykinin. So this is a G protein coupled receptor, a beta one G protein coupled receptor. And uh, if you don't know what a G protein receptor is, please watch my other video. So, and here's a G protein, and here is the uh, effector, uh, phospholipase C and PLA2. So bradykinin binds to the G protein receptor, uh, activates the G protein inside, which activates the phospholipase C. And basically what happens is that the mast cells, after all this, create an enzyme called chymase. So chymase gets secreted out into the plasma of the blood vessels. So bradykinin activates with mast cells, creating chymase. And chymase is, this, is another enzyme which can convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. So as you can see, chymase reacts with angiotensin 1. It cleaves off the, his, the histamine and leucine bond of, of, the, of the rest, leaving an octapeptide, also known as angiotensin 2. So what happens now is that angiotensin 2 can work as its normal normal function, normal peptide function, um, increasing the heart rate. So here we've got angiotensin 2 leaving the premises.